Hi everyone. I am continuing on with my video series on Java programming for beginners. In my previous video, I introduced the if-then statement in Java. In this video, I will discuss the more advanced if-then-else statements and illustrate with examples how they work. So let's begin. The if-then-else statement is an extension of the if statement in Java. The difference is the if-then-else statement provides an alternative path of execution when a conditional expression evaluates to false. Recall with the plain if-then uh, statement, if the conditional expression evaluates to true, it executes all the statements in the if block. However, with the if-then-else statement, we add extra functionality. We provide an else clause that says if the conditional expression evaluates to false, execute the statements in the else block. Okay, so just to recap, when the conditional expression is true, we perform the statements in the, con in the block that immediately follows the conditional expression. Otherwise, if it evaluates to false, we execute the statements that immediately follow the else block. So that's fairly straightforward. So when would you use the if then else statement? Well, it's typically used when data falls into two mutually exclusive categories, and the program should perform different operations for each set of data. So a simple example would be, if a user were to uh, ask to enter a password, you would say, if the password is correct, that's the conditional expression, is password correct? If it is, you perform statements to welcome the user. Else, if it's false, you ask the user to re-enter the password. So that's a simple example. So one thing to note, the conditional expression must be a Boolean expression. That is, it must evaluate to Boolean value. So it can't evaluate, for example, to uh, an int or a float or a byte or a short, etc., or a string for that matter. It must evaluate to a Boolean value. So I have a simple example here where I say, given two integers a and b, a is set to 5, b is set to 12, and we say if a is greater than b, if 5 is greater than 12, no, it is clearly not. So it doesn't execute this because this is not true. The conditional expression evaluates the false. Therefore, it jumps to the else statement and immediately executes all the statements inside the else block. So it would print out that b is greater than a, which is true. 12 is greater than 5. Now, there's a small subtlety I want to make you aware of here. The else block is executed not only when a is less than b, but also when a is equal to b, i.e. It is always, the else block is always executed when this conditional expression evaluates the false. And it will always evaluate the false if A is not greater than B. Okay, and there's two conditions that can satisfy that, when A is equal to B or when A is less than B. So just be aware of that, okay? I have another example here from the online Oracle Java tutorial and the bicycle class that it provides. So here is a possible apply brakes um, method. Now it only makes sense to apply the brakes when the bicycle is moving. So we have an if statement here that checks is the bike moving? If is moving is true, well then you reduce your speed. However, if this evaluates the false, the following statement is executed that is part of the else block. It simply prints out an error to say the bike has already stopped. So there's another example. Now, continuing on, we can actually have multiple if else if statements. And I have an example here which I've typed in over here. So basically, we have a simple program here that defines a test score to be an integer number. And depending on that test score, we wish to assign a grade. So if the test score is greater than or equal to 90, we assign a grade of A. If the test score is greater than or equal to 80, we assign a test score of B. If it's greater than or equal to 70, it has a score of C. If it's greater than or equal to 60, it has a score of D. Otherwise, in all of the values, we assign an F. And then at the end, the program prints out the grade. OK, let's run that right now, and let's see what happens. Now, just briefly for those who haven't seen this before, I've set up my Notepad++ editor on Windows to run macros that will compile and run Java automatically for you, for me. So if you're interested in this yourself, I actually have a video that details step-by-step -step instructions how to do this on my YouTube channel. Okay, as you can see, when I ran the program, it printed out grade is equal to C, which is correct, okay? But there's something I wanna highlight. You may have noticed that the value of test score can satisfy more than one expression in the compound if statements here, okay? So we have if 
test score is greater than 70, yes, test score is 76, that's true. But also, if test score is greater than 60, well, 76 is greater than 60, so it can satisfy both of those. So which one does it satisfy? Which one does it run? Well, as you can see, it printed out grade is equal to C. So that'll, that'll inform us, and this is actually what happens. It processes each if statement in order, going them down, and as soon as it finds an if else condition, or rather an if statement, that satisfies, uh, that can be satisfied as true, or can be evaluated as true. And here, the very first one that evaluates it true is test score is greater than 70. Hence, it immediately executes the statement in the block, the true block that follows that if expression. And after executing all the statements in that block, it immediately jumps to the very last uh, closing curly brace of the multiple compound if else if statements. It will not execute the statement because it clearly states else. So this will only be executed if no other statement had evaluated the true. But this one has evaluated the true, therefore it will not execute this one. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, here I just have written down uh, the full formal syntax for multiple if else if statements. Okay. And there's one more extension, and it's nested if statements. And you can see from my example here that we can have an if statement nested inside another if statements. So we have two tax bands, let's say they're called one and two, and we want to process, determine which tax band we're in. So if we're in the first tax band, we execute this block, and if we're in the second one, we execute this. But within each tax band, we have different tax rates. So this is why an example of why we'd have multiple nested if statements here. So if tax band is equal to one, do the following, and we say if income is equal to less than 36,000, set the tax to be 20%, else set the tax to be 41%. So that's an important thing. So this is a simple example to demonstrate nested if then else statements, okay? And there's a few things to note about this. The if statements can be written as part of a true or false block of another if statement. And that's what we have here. But recall that within any if statement true block, and by that I mean any uh, condition that's satisfied with true, the block that immediately follows it is called a true block. Okay. We can put in any valid Java expression or any valid Java statement here. And of course, an if statement is a valid Java statement. And that's why we can have multiple nested if statements. So typically, you nest if statements when more information is required beyond the results of the first if condition. And we've actually illustrated that in the previous slide. So the compiler matches any else clause with the most, with the most recent if statement that doesn't already have an else clause. So it is recommended to always use curly braces to force the desired if else pairing and to indent your code. This reduces the possibility of logical errors. So just to illustrate these last two points there, I, just to show I've indented the various different statements to show which belongs, which else statement belongs with what. It's very clear to see that this closed curly brace belongs with this one, that this belongs with this one, that this belongs with this, and that this belongs with this. Okay, So that is the power and the advantage of nesting. We can logically see what um, else statement belongs to which if statements, and which open curly brace grace belongs to which closed curly brace. You can imagine if I had all of these literally indented all on the left hand side, it would almost be impossible to read this code. Okay, that's all I wish to say. Um, thank you very much.